This is Rob Dew for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. This is going to be another vaccine report. And I hope at the end of this report that you will come to realize that just because we don't agree with the medical establishment that we aren't wrong, we aren't crazy, we aren't conspiracy theorists, and that there's a lot of facts and a lot of studies behind the reasoning for people not wanting to vaccinate themselves and their children. So I hope this report will put all that to rest and all the vaccine pushing and all the vaccine hysteria that's going on in this country. Because this is a first step on a long line of tyrannies that are lined up if they get this, if they get their way. If they're able to push mandatory vaccines onto people, it's over for everything. You see some of the largest outbreaks in states where they have personal health exemptions or religious exemptions. Do we need to rethink those? We're going to start this off with a little exchange between Senator Elizabeth Warren and Dr. Shukit, who works at the CDC. This is what I call the beauty pageant of vaccines. They throw softball questions at the officials and the officials throw back the canned answers. So let's look at this exchange. Dr. Shukit, you are the top immunization official in the United States. I just want to walk through the science on this with you. Is there any scientific evidence that vaccines cause autism? No. Is there any scientific evidence that vaccines cause profound mental disorders? Uh, no, but some of the diseases we vaccinate against can. Is there any scientific evidence that vaccines have contributed to the rise in allergies or autoimmune disorders among kids? Uh, no. Are there additives or preservatives in vaccines that can be toxic to kids? No, not in the amounts that they're in vaccines. Is there any scientific evidence that kids can develop immunity to these diseases on their own simply by eating nutritious foods or being active? No. How do the risks of a child responding negatively to a vaccination compare with the risks of skipping vaccinations and risking exposure to a deadly disease? Vaccines are safe and highly effective, and it's important for parents to know they're the best way to protect their kids. Parents should know that all of the credible scientific evidence suggests that modern vaccines are safe, modern vaccines are effective, and modern vaccines are our best chance of protecting our children from diseases that can kill them. Is that right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So you heard it from the officials that there's no problem with vaccines whatsoever, perfectly clean record, nothing to worry about. Go out and get your child shot up today, especially with that MMR, right? In fact, I get sent this study a lot. I'm going to read it out to you so you can go read it yourself. Vaccines are not associated with autism, an evidence-based meta-analysis of case control and cohort studies. Basically, what this has done is three doctors looked at I don't know, 15, 20 different studies that all said vaccines are safe. So then they came up with the same conclusion that vaccines were safe. What's interesting is if you go to the epilogue of this study, one of the doctors, Dr. Guy Eslick, says this, as an epidemiologist, I believe the data that is presented in this meta-analysis. However, as a parent of three children, I have some understanding of the fears associated with reactions and effects of vaccines. My first two children had febrile seizures after routine vaccinations, one of them a serious event. These events did not stop me from vaccinating my third child, however. I did take some proactive measures to reduce the risk of similar adverse effects. I vaccinated my child in the morning so that we were aware if any early adverse reaction during the day. And I also gave my child a dose of Tylenol 30 minutes before the vaccination was given to reduce any fever that might develop after the injection. So the doctor in this study admits that two of his children had adverse reactions to vaccines, one of them very serious, yet he still vaccinated his third child. This is because of the intense programming doctors go under by this Rockefeller and Carnegie Foundation funded medicine paradigm, which is only vaccines, only prescription drugs, that is the only thing that can save you. Nothing else. Herbal remedies don't work, vitamins don't work, nothing else works unless it came from a Rockefeller Foundation company or a Carnegie Foundation company. Okay? And that, those are your big pharma companies that exist now, these chemical giants that don't want anything out there natural. They have to synthesize everything because they're afraid of natural competition. Furthermore, in this study, they list all the studies that they look at. 
one of which caught my eye, and it was a population-based study of measles, mumps, and rubella vaccination and autism. One of the doctors in this, Paul Thorson, MD, is wanted by the CDC for massive fraud. He was taking funds and, and grants that were supposed to be given to him for research and funneling them into his personal bank accounts. How much credibility can we take in this? And now let's look at some actual studies that are being done that show vaccines do cause harm, quite contrary to what you just saw in the exchange between Senator Warren and the doctor from the CDC. Vaccines are safe and highly effective, and it's important for parents to know they're the best way to protect their kids. First article, Activist Post, 22 medical studies that show vaccines can cause autism. And they list the studies down here. They're in the uh, Journals of Epidemiology, uh, Journal of Inorganic Biochemistry, study in the Journal of Toxicology and Environmental Health. These are reputable papers. And all these say there's a problem with vaccines. Yet I guess our CDC officials didn't have time to read these studies because they don't say vaccines are safe and effective. They're very effective and they're very safe. Modern vaccines are safe. Modern vaccines are effective. The vaccine is safe and effective. And it is a safe form of flu vaccine. It's very effective in preventing the flu. Vaccines are important, safe, and effective. Vaccines are safe and highly effective. And Here's more. Journal of Biomedical Sciences, the Annals of Clinical Psychiatry, American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Journal of Child Neurology, a study conducted at Massachusetts General Hospital. You can read the synopsis of each one of these studies, and then it has links to these studies, so you can go read them yourself. I encourage you to do this. Spend a night. Your child's health is worth it. Let's continue. Polish study confirms vaccines can cause a large number of adverse effects. And they say, it is not reasonable to assume that manipulation of the immune system through an increasing number of vaccinations during critical periods of brain development will not result in adverse neurodevelopment outcomes. Doctors and researchers point to the worsening state of health of the child population since the 60s, which coincided with the increasingly introduced vaccinations. Allergic diseases, including asthma, autoimmune diseases, diabetes, and many neurological dysfunctions, difficulty in learning, ADD, ADHD, seizures, and autism, and chronic conditions to which their attention has been brought. Here's another study out of PR Newswire. Infant vaccines produce autism symptoms in new primate study by the University of Pittsburgh scientists. And basically what they did was take the basic childhood vaccination schedule and inject it into baby monkeys. And then they watched them not develop correctly. And if you look around you, go to any public place where there are kids nowadays, you see a lot of kids that are really messed up and not acting like normal kids. You'll see it, just go out there. Here's more. MMR vaccine isn't safe after all. UK government forced to concede. A UK court has ruled that the vaccine caused severe brain damage in a boy now aged 18 and has ordered the government to pay compensation. Robert was just 13 months old when he had the MMR vaccination and from being a healthy baby who was developing normally, he started to suffer epileptic fits and became unresponsive. Here's another study, a measles outbreak at a college with a prematriculation immunization requirement. In early 1988, an outbreak of 84 measles cases occurred at a college in Colorado in which over 98% of the students had documentation of adequate measles immunity. Over 70, that's 83% of the cases had been vaccinated at greater than or equal to the 12 months of age. So fully vaccinated people were still catching the measles and they were at a 98% uh, vaccination rate. Here's a Chinese study. Difficulties in eliminating measles and controlling rubella and mumps, a cross-sectional study of a first measles and rubella vaccination and a second measles, mumps, and rubella vaccination. The report coverage of the MR and the MMR vaccine is greater than 99% in the Zhejiang province. However, the incidence of measles, mumps, and rubella remains high. Now let's go back to the testimony of Dr. Shukit over at the CDC and let's hear what she has to say about what happens if you don't get the measles vaccine and you get the measles. What are the complications that may occur? If your child contracted measles in the United States, the chances of a death would be about 1 in 1,000? That, that's right, but remember there are other problems with measles, not just that rare risk of dying. There are other complications besides death. Children can get pneumonia, they can get dehydration, they can also get a neurologic problem, encephalitis, which can be quite scary and severe. So she says death, pneumonia, encephalitis. 
Coincidentally, those are three things listed in the insert, which they don't show you when you go get your vaccination, of side effects that have been documented with the MMR vaccine. Hmm, makes you wonder, doesn't it? Family to receive 1.5 million in first ever vaccine autism court award. It took many years, but this occurred in 2010. It's a young lady named Hannah Poling. In July 2000, Hannah was vaccinated against nine diseases in one doctor's visit. Measles, mumps, rubella, polio, varsella, diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, and hemophilus influenza. Afterward, her health declined rapidly. She developed high fever, stopped eating, didn't respond when spoken to, and began showing signs of autism, and began having screaming fits. In 2002, Hannah's parents filed an autism claim in federal vaccine court. Five years later, the government settled the case before trial and had it sealed. Here's what Hannah's parents had to say. Her dad is actually a neurosurgeon, so these aren't just crazy parents thinking that vaccines cause the injury. Here's what they had to say in Good Morning America. I think the bottom line is our daughter was born normal. She developed normally for the first 18 months of life. Mm -hmm. There were no signs of any underlying genetic disorder. Then she was vaccinated. She became ill. That illness eventually led to a diagnosis of autism, then later seizures. I think that's the bottom line and that vaccines were related to her illness. Hannah's story in many ways doesn't sound that unfamiliar to us. Seemed like a normal child and something seemed to change, didn't seem to be genetic, didn't seem to make sense. What do you believe the message is out there for other parents? Hannah's case and, and as other parents out there hear her story, I think her case is echoed among thousands of other uh, similar cases. And, and I know a lot of other medical experts are gonna get out there and say that this is very unusual oddball case and and we don't really think it is at all I mean interestingly enough if you or your child is injured by a vaccine you have to go to a special court and this is a court with no jury it's got a special judge it's different rules and there's no reporters allowed nobody's allowed to even see the evidence it's just presided over in a secret tribunal if federal health officials oppose compensation the case is argued before a special master in the US claims court Many refer to this as vaccine court, though it isn't a court at all, but rather an administrative procedure in which the family asks the government to admit the vaccine caused their child harm and requests compensation for the child's care. Pharmaceutical companies do not have to participate in the proceedings at all. Taxpayers pay for all damages. The U.S. Department of Justice acts as the government's lawyer with taxpayers footing the bill for their defense. The family's attorney is paid out of the trust fund administered by the Department of Health and Human Services. There's no required discovery process, so potentially incriminating documents stay hidden in the hands of the vaccine manufacturers. Most hearings are off limits. No public, no reporters. There's no judge or jury. A special master appointed by the U.S. Court of Federal Claims both presides over the hearings and issues the rulings, which can limit the chance of an objective verdict. Since 1989, this court has awarded over $2.6 billion to people injured by vaccines. Doesn't sound very safe and effective to me. And this is money that you and I have to pay. This doesn't come out of the drug companies' pockets. This is paid for by the federal government. Remember that. And this is from the Health Resources and Services Administration National Vaccine Injury Compensation Program Statistics Report issued March 5th, 2014. Very current statistics, not even a year old. Now let's go over to Europe. MMR, a mother's victory. Valentino Boca was never the same child after the jab in his arm. He developed autism and in a landmark judgment, a judge has ruled that his devastating disability was provoked by the inoculation against measles, mumps, and rubella. That's the MMR vaccine that they say is safe and effective. Okay, so they've awarded his family over a million dollars. Here's another one. U.S. media blackout, Italian courts rule vaccines cause autism. The Italian infant plaintiff received three doses of GlaxoSmithKline inference hexa, a hexavalent vaccine administered in the first year of life. These doses occurred from March to October 2006. The child regressed into autism shortly after receiving the three doses. 
Presiding Judge Nicola DeLeo considered another piece of damning evidence, a 1,200-page confidential GlaxoSmithKline report. The industry document provided ample evidence of adverse reactions from the vaccine, including five known cases of autism resulting from the vaccine's administration during its clinical trials. So they've known back in the trials that there's problems with these vaccines, yet they keep pushing them. They keep ramping them up. They keep giving